Chow mein is usually an afterthought, but if you order it with protein as a main, it's gonna be this much per plate. Hmm, not so cheap. When it could be the greatest of all time for this, that is but cheaper. Okay, so today we're making chow mein. Now, I know this is a butt cheaper and oftentimes people are like, oh, I don't have a wok, even though it's like 15 to $25 and I can use it for pretty much the rest of my life. Let me just say something, you gotta make an investment on yourself. But if you don't have the wok and you don't wanna spend money on it, I got you. You can literally just use a pan, just a big pan. Problem solved. They also make induction safe woks. There's your solution. Now, as I said before, chow mein is usually an afterthought. People think, oh, Panda Express, it's like $4 for like a gigantic batch of just cabbage and greasy noodles. We've already taken care of that. I'm talking about the real chow. The real stuff, when you go to a restaurant and you get a big bowl of it with chicken or shrimp or whatever, protein, and there's real flavor involved. This is kind of like Chinese yaki udon in a way, sort of, kind of, not really. You see where I'm going. So why don't we make something that's worthy of sitting on the throne of noodle dishes for the cheapest price you'll ever make in your life. Now with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Not only is this ridiculously cheap, it's also one of the easiest recipes you'll see on this channel. Let's not waste any time farting around here and get this done. First, we need to make our chow mein sauce. In a small bowl, combine two and a half tablespoons or 38 grams of soy sauce, one and a half tablespoons or 22 grams of rice vinegar, two tablespoons or 40 grams of hoisin sauce, one teaspoon or four grams of toasted sesame oil, give that a little whisk, uh, no whiskey business today because I've had it up to here. Then whisk in two teaspoons or five grams of cornstarch until completely combined and pop that brother to the side. Now, if you're a little sweetie pie and you're using a wok, you're gonna need to season it first. Add just enough vegetable oil to make a little puddle on the bottom of your wok. Crank the heat to medium high and let it heat, swirling to coat the edges often until it begins to smoke. Then immediately discard the oil and wipe out the pan with a paper towel. Congratulations, not only does your wok look like it's the most polished marble in whatever hemisphere you're in, but it's also seasoned. Next, get yourself a large pot of water, boiling over medium high heat, and add 14 ounces or 400 grams of fresh chow mein or stir fry noodles. You can find these guys at most Asian markets, and they're super affordable. Boil that for about 10 to 20 seconds, or whatever the package directions say, and immediately drain and rinse with cold water until completely cooled to stop the cooking process. Now get back in that wok, and add three tablespoons or 42 grams of vegetable oil, heat over medium high until hotter than the surface of the sun, or maybe not quite that hot. Add 12 ounces or 340 grams of boneless skinless chicken thighs that have been cut into half inch cubes, and I'd recommend searing this in two batches to avoid overcrowding, and then just cook that bad boy until every piece is cooked all the way through and has some nice color on it. This will take a few minutes, so while that's going, finally chop seven cloves of garlic and pop that into a pinch bowl. You'll thank me later. You can also pre-prep all of your other vegetables. You're gonna julienne one whole carrot, finely dice two ribs of celery, cut two green onions into one inch segments, and slice three and a half cups or 315 grams of Napa cabbage nice and thin. Granted, green cabbage also works fine here, so. Remove the meat from the wok and add your green onions. Stir fry that bad boy for about 30 seconds or till the green are wilted and starting to char nicely. Then add three quarters of your finely chopped garlic and stir fry that until the garlic turns to a toasted golden brown color. Add your celery and carrots, stir fry that for two minutes or until softened, followed by your cabbage, crank the heat to high and stir fry the absolute piss out of that for two minutes or until the cabbage is wilted and has a little bit of char. Turn the heat to medium high, add your chicken back and stir fry till the chicken is hot again, about 30 seconds. Add in one cup or 85 grams of, well, bean sprouts. Not a huge fan of them, but you know, they make sense here, so it's fine. Now comes the finishing touch. Add your noodles and stir fry for about 45 seconds, then add all of your chow mein sauce, stir fry and toss until completely coated, then add two tablespoons or 30 grams of water, stir fry and toss again repeatedly for about one minute or until your noodles are beautifully glazed and coated with the elixir of flavor. Cut the heat and finish that off by tossing with your remaining garlic and stir until thoroughly combined. And add additional soy sauce to taste if needed. Trust me when I say this raw garlic technique is not something you skip. It really perfumes that thing. With the spicy garlicky kick that I guarantee you're gonna get a kiss for. Now before you have a good old fashioned buzz, you can serve this either in the pan itself with some green onion on top, or you can dish it up per person individually, and you guessed it, green onion on top of that as well. Now of course, optionally, you can add other things like chili oil or a fried egg, but that's all up to you. And that is literally it. We have a special chow mein that you need to sit down, tuck in your napkin, and respect while you eat it for this price per person. Now let's taste test this and see if this chow mein tastes like it costs 20 times more than it actually does. Wow, what is this? What is this? This isn't just chow mein, it's a chicken chow mein. Now what is that? This is a whole meal. If you're thinking about the Panda Express chow mein, it's a completely different ball game because that's just a little side dish. It's got like cabbage and that's mm -hmm. really it. You sit down with your family, your dogs, your children if you have them, and you eat this for this price right here. I'm just like. I 
I just came back from another planet. Perfectly cooked, seasoned, packed full of flavor. Chow mein noodles. So goddamn good. This tastes like if you took takeout chow mein and then just and then this was birthed. That's about cheaper, buddy. This is a goddamn eating experience. You wanna know what else has mounds of hot, steamy noodles wafting in your face? B-roll. <laughs> Our main event chicken chow mein for this price right here. I don't know what's in this hand. Could be anything. The editor could do anything at this moment. I've had a lot of different noodle dishes. I wish that I wouldn't make this more often, not gonna lie. I don't make chow mein every day. Four times a year that I sit back and I'm like, oh, let me, I'll make a quick little chow mein. You know, I usually do like a yaki udon. I don't know whether or not I wanna say this, but I might just vote for this chow mein over the yaki udon. Call me crazy. And I'm gonna save money? That was an accident. The adventure choice is always in your hands. Should you wanna make noodle dish that's gonna blow everyone's pants off while spending zero dollars? Maybe not zero. What was I saying? Anyway, with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.